The project is called The Monster in the Mountains, and it's set in Guerrero, Mexico, in the aftermath of the disappearance of the 43 students. But the social landscape really that gave rise to the events and what lies behind these headlines. What's the situation in these communities? How could an event as horrible as this happen? After the 43 students went missing, uh, people went out to try to find their bodies. Well, they found graves. They opened the graves. There were bodies in them, except they were not the students. And no one knew who they were. So that inspired more looking, which found more graves. Until now, there's over 400 individuals in this one town, the town of Iguala, that have been disappeared and whose bodies people believe are buried in these just scores of hidden graves. In response to this ever deteriorating security situation, communities decided that no one is protecting them. So in these communities, people have really, literally, taken up arms to defend themselves against this threat that they know is very real. So in town after town after town in Guerrero, you'll have checkpoints at the entrance to each town, and it's men with guns behind sandbags. And they decide, yes or no, if you can enter their community. This project's part of a larger project called the People of Clouds, which is looking at the sources of migration from southern Mexico to the United States. The first story I worked on was about the impact of migration. And it was a town that had lost 80% of its population to the north. The second story was looking at environmental reasons behind migration. And I looked at a town that had lost so much topsoil, actually the entire town began to slide downhill, was destroyed by erosion. Once I completed that project, I went into Guerrero to particularly look at poverty. And a lot of that has been the impact of NAFTA and that the one uh, source of income, the one kind of economic activity that these communities depend on is corn farming. The cost of the fertilizer, the cost of the transportation, all of these expenses add up to being more than the purchase price of imported corn from the U.S. Despite all of these issues, these difficulties that people go through, they remain extremely strong people with lots of hope and the hope for the children. And I think that's why this story, what happened to the 43 students, bites so hard. The very representatives of hope of the next generation is just snuffed out. That's the ultimate cruelty of what happened. But the cruelty in these communities is at so many levels. What's happening to their ability to keep themselves fed, that's also a cruelty. How they are represented in their government, so riddled with corruption, that's also a cruelty. So it's all of these things together. As Americans, as the United States, it's incumbent upon us to try to understand these, these forces. And a lot of these forces, which we set in motion ourselves through policies like NAFTA, or in this case, through this enormous drug appetite that we have that's fueling so much of this violence, the money behind it, 
Okay? We're, this is a story of us as well, not just a story of them somewhere over there. 